Hey y'all, this is Moira Skin. We just had an interview with Zach Zang at the Zach Zang Show. So listen to it. We talked about music and inspiration. So go listen to it. Hello, beautiful human. Thanks for clicking or tapping on our conversation with Mono Skin. I am so excited. They, in my opinion, are one of the last remaining rock bands. We have a lot to discuss. Victoria is not going to be joining them today. And just a heads up, there may be some audio glitches like 17 minutes in. Please bear with us, I beg. And hey, leave your honest feedback in the comment section below. Hit like on the video. We have a lot to discuss. Today's interview coming at you courtesy of Total Wireless. Do amazing. Here we go. Mono skin. Let's do this. Hello, beautiful human. I'm Zach. That's Dan. Yep. And we welcome to the studio. Mono skin. Woo. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. God, Hello, guys. Am I staring at one of the last remaining rock bands in existence? <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's plenty of. Do you really believe that? Do you think there's an abundance of rock bands in today's no, music not world? Not an abundance. No. Not an abundance. We're Who? one of the youngest. Who do you consider yeah. your peer in rock music? Oh, our peer. Uh, there's there's a few bands that are really good. Um, Idols. Uh, Griddle and Fleet and uh, Zeppelin. many, many. No, Zeppelin, we are not equal. <laughs> ah, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. No, 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 okay. yeah, not equal. I, you guys have an amazing story, and I one, I thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy schedule, both traveling and work, to be here. It really means a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you Thanks. guys have a crazy story. I don't even necessarily know where to begin, but how's it been i mean have you been able to do you soak in what's going on around you or are you just moving from one task to the next task to yeah. the next yeah yeah, that's, that's, yeah, yeah. basically it's that's what we're doing. Doing. yeah yeah we're living it day by day but i think it's the better way to live it like we are no we have no plans or or something that we specifically want to achieve we just go with the flow and uh, write our music, play our music and see how it goes. And uh, I think that it helps us to stay grounded and uh, to keep the, the fun part of it because otherwise it's just a job. Yeah. yeah. The pity is that we don't have too many time to spend in the city, you know, because we, when we travel, we make lots of, obviously, uh, Different places, interviews, yeah. yeah, interviews and also lots of this promotion stuff that it's incredible, but unfortunately we don't have to time, time to, to spend yeah. In, around the city, you know. Yeah. Are are you gaining inspiration while you're yeah. doing this? Yes, promo? of course yeah. we are. Yeah, always. Yeah. The new places like can give you new new inspiration. Of course, like can just give something new for the environment that of course influences you. Also in the writing section, so the music, in, in like in a certain way, something that you live day by day. Totally. As we are like doing now, so. We also try to spend some like part of our time just to grab the the better we can through the ex experiences like that we are doing now. Yeah, basically. this is the best part of writing new music. It's so important. How do you document your inspiration? Like, do you keep notes? Do you do voice memos? Like, when something hits, yeah, we do. Yeah. We do a lot of voice memos. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is usually coming? Is it lyrics or is it a, a beat? What is it? It depends. Uh, it changes every time. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, many, many times, he comes up with like guitar riffs or some chords, and uh, I come up with lyrics. And uh, Ethan, he is always like playing with, uh, with, uh, <laughs> with, with the phone the, yeah with the yeah. phone we do some production stuff so yeah we're with with garage bands yeah. really yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Like, I like to do productions in my own just to to have fun you, so he's you, the nerd of the group yeah <laughs> but you really need each and every one of you to make a song possible yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure sure yeah, yeah. how does a song usually start does it start from a riff idea or a, a drum idea it's very yeah, it, it depends, depends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's very randomic like um many songs we started with the lyrics and many other songs we started with the guitar or with the drums or with the bass it's uh it changes every time it depends on who has the i would i would say like the most focused idea like yeah all the, there's always one of us who takes the lead in a song and uh, one other in another song, of course, because we have all different backgrounds. So um, every everyone tries to like drive the others to his part. But I think that's what makes our music cool because it's a, it's a mixture of all our 
uh, different influences. backgrounds yeah. and influences. Yeah, sometimes start yeah. from the brief, I don't know, from Garage Band, for example. So yeah. The, yeah, this yeah. is the cool also, part. Also, us, yeah, can this can be cool a part, part of it. Because we try to experiment a lot, you know, and I don't know. Try different try ways. Try different yeah. ways. Yeah, exactly. Well, so I, I want to dive into, you know, song by song, but your story is rather incredible. I mean, is it true that you started singing when you were six years old? Yeah, yeah, I always sing it in my life. Like, it was part of my everyday life. Uh, just, I, I had fun doing it. But when do you realize that you want to go from singing for fun to, like, forming some sort of a band? Yeah, I was, I was like, 15, 16. And, yeah. and then you meet everybody else, yeah. and you really start street performing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Whose idea is it to go to the street? Uh, we were kind of forced to... Because uh, in Rome, that's there's no like many many places to play, and uh, nobody wants to pay you, and uh, yeah, it's it's <laughs> yeah, kind of hard. That's true. So it was like obligatory to to start playing in the streets. What do you guys learn from busking? Yeah, the sta- I I I think that our stage presence comes from from playing in the streets because you don't yeah, you, you don't have an actual audience. They mm-hmm. they're not there to to listen to you. They're just walking around so you have to grab their attention and uh, the real goal is to is to make them stay longer not just a song but like one two five six song because that's the moment when they give you the money (laughs) (laughs) it's true it's it's when they forget that they had other shit to do and they're watching you that you really you win yeah yeah and i think also that Mm, it was necessary necessary for the practice, you know, yeah. and also for the problems. For example, I don't know sometimes problem uh, solving. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, problem solving. Like the I don't know the string of the guitar, and so okay, let's go. On. The show must go on, and this kind of, of yeah, stuff. So yeah, yeah, to keep the pressure. Yeah, yeah. the show must go on. I, it, it's interesting because you guys only start writing songs originals because you want to enter a music competition, right? It's like some Pulse music thing, and they force you to write an original song? No, 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 no. We had it. We had it. It's, uh, they, they forced us to have a name. <laughs> we didn't have a name at the time. You didn't have a name? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, 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 we came out with Mona's King kind of randomic because um, Victoria, is she's half Danish. Yeah. So we said, okay, we, we don't have an, any idea for, for the name of the band, so just say some cool words in Danish and then we're going to change it and then we never change it because we are lazy asses. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, how many times yeah. have you had to explain to somebody how to say your name? Yeah, too many. It, <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, okay, first original song you write though because going from playing covers on the street to writing your own original stuff, like, that's a different game, correct? Yeah, yeah. 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 But, um, like, we, we started uh, writing... Uh, like our own, song, our own songs, like two weeks after we we started playing together, because we f- we felt that I don't know something was was going on actually. It was not just a band to 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 spend your afternoons. It was something serious. So we said from the very beginning, like let's r- write our songs. And when we were playing on the streets, we played like thirty covers and two or three original songs. Yeah. So, but what tells you that this is something serious? Like, what do you, what opens your eyes to like? Okay, this is something real, and I need to give this water. No, it's and just time. a feeling. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Just a feeling that like everybody was putting his all his effort in it, like in in an automatic way. We didn't we didn't have to talk about it. It just happened. It was natural. Yeah, yeah. And I think that it was really important when, especially on the, on the first gigs, you know, because the people in front of us that. Also, I don't know, like one one person or two person in front of us say, "Oh wow, this man is cool, uh, cool. They, these guys are cool." It was really, you know, mm, motivating. Exactly. Yeah. But, yeah. But, but like motivating just off those two people, three people, yeah, like the yeah, tiny, just yeah. three people or two people, because it was like, oh okay. Yeah, we did a lot of yeah. bad, bad, bad gigs. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool anyway. How do you? You work out kinks by busking on the street, but I can only imagine how many hours you all have spent playing just to yourselves. Yeah. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. No. What, what does it take to have a band where musical chemistry just is second nature? Because is it always instant, or does it take you locking yourself in a room, yeah. playing the same it's shit? Both. I, I, yeah. I would say it's it's both, because um, you have, of course, you have to, um, I don't know, 
focus a lot on what you're doing and spend many 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 hours in the in the rehearsal room and growing up together helps you kind of um, setting on the same path but on the other hand it's something that ap happens naturally I, I think that the fact that we are close very close friends helps this chemistry because I, I think that if you take it as a job and you I don't know you feel your your bandmates as colleagues you cannot create this this kind of chemistry the band has to be like your family is that yeah. how you see each other yeah yeah absolutely to the That's point where you're safe to share anything or yeah. pitch any idea yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah sure I was really surprised when I was looking at all the credits on your songs. There's only really one producer that's yeah. on there, and it's all the stuff is written by you guys. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yes. is is there a sense of pride? Yeah. Because that's really rare. <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's really right. important for us to try to, you know, write our own yeah, music. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. For example, when the... when we played the cover, we try to, you know, experiment also a lot with the cover from another artist, for example. Yeah. Because it's very important for us make you know our music. In, into our yeah, songs to put so. our signature yeah. on kind of everything we'll get into some of the originals but like y y you're referencing the covers and you guys have three of very famous covers that end up like charting in italy begging is the one that we know here yeah my question to you is that a cover of mad con's cover of frankie valley yeah i know it was um, a, a mad con it is yeah, a mad con yeah, yeah, yeah mad con 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 version that's what i thought yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know frankie valley i believe gets the credit obviously because yeah. it starts with him yeah so when it's time for you to cover a song and you do that for the x factor correct yeah yes how do you how does it how does it start how do you break it down where do you begin it was just cool we, we named <laughs> some cool songs that we we would have liked to, to to cover and uh begging was was one that like united us and we all agree yeah. on that and uh it was also like super easy to 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 arrange to because uh it was kind of natural it was our, our vibe at the time we were pretty funky and and stuff so at the time it was perfect for us yeah how do you take on vocals that aren't written by you or written by a bandmate how do you embody yourself or put yourself into that story um all of our songs are, are written by me but when we do a cover um i don't know i i think that if a lyrics is kind of well written it's uh it's because everybody can feel recognized in that lyrics like everyone can give his uh, his own um interpretation but um the, the artist that wrote it in in a certain way had managed to uh, connect with uh, with all the different people because of the the same experience or something that reminds you of an experience that you lived before and uh, i think that's the point of uh, of the good writing yeah, good writing a timeless record Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> <He's right>. <laughs> <laughs> <But> <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to lose my thought but uh it, timeless record is something you strive for right in life like a, a song like begging that will be yeah. around forever for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of yeah, years yeah, and yeah. obviously like throughout history it comes back frankie yeah. valley and mad con mad con to you guys and who knows what another 20 30 years will bring yeah. but is that what you're striving for when you're crafting music as a group do you set goals before you get into the studio or no 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 no, no, no. i would say no, no. but I, I would say that we always write songs for for ourselves like it's it's for us it's an urge to communicate and it's what, something that we first of all we like to listen to and we like to play but when a song is is kind of different you feel it like when a song is going to be a hit but not just a hit in terms of charts but in terms of uh, how people connect with it i think that you just feel it something clicks in your mind and uh, you say okay this is the song and yeah. that what that's what we always uh, try to to do in a song yeah i've been something of magic in the studio you know yeah. really good but, but the point of clicking is always different right like yeah, yeah like yeah. when it clicks is it a different point in the process um I, I i don't know it's uh yeah it's different sometimes you feel it from the very beginning and sometimes you feel when you actually finish the song but yeah, um, yeah. sometimes you have just a part of yeah. the song and, and we say okay that this part it's it you know and yeah. so you arrange a song all around all, all that around part. that part yeah. exactly oh, wow. yeah so when you're in the studio do you have like a full set of instruments ready to go like are you 
Are you playing while you create, or are you doing something totally different? No, no, we're no, no. we're playing. Yeah. We're playing. Just uh, the four of us, the power trio and me. Yeah, so it'd be you two, Victoria, and then you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm all, you know, we, we don't get many rock bands in our <laughs> studio. We get a lot of everybody else just because there's not a ton of rock bands. So I am yeah. fascinated in how the process works and how how a song that rocks so hard can begin. Like, is there a point in the process where you're playing these songs acoustically at all? Or are you always playing it on... No. Rocking hard. No, 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 no. Sometimes we play absolutely acoustic songs. For example, uh, lots of our songs um, are born wi with the acoustic guitar, mm. and yeah. especially like the, all the ballads. Yeah, all the ballads. Oh, also, I don't know. For example, Ventani. Um, it was created during the quarantine, the pandemic, and yeah. so I was in my home and I sent a vocal message from my house to to Damiano, and after we create the song together after the lyrics uh, in the studio, so it depends from the from the song, but absolutely, we also create with acoustic guitar, I don't, I don't know, for example, for the piano, because yeah. for I Wanna Be Your Slave, that, that's uh, Yeah, I, I wrote the riff yeah. with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the piano on the phone, ha! Yeah. like the, the mini piano. That's pretty ball. Yeah. <laughs> and we say, oh, okay, it sounds because good. I, I, yeah. <laughs> but you knew, you were able to hear it right from that. Yeah, it was just in my mind. I. I was thinking about I don't know, but and I I heard this riff and dun, 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 and I said I I have to record it, so I I opened Garage Band and I said well, dun, dun, yeah. dun, dun. <laughs> say well it's a banger. Yeah. <laughs> but so then you craft the lyrics only after you have that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. where do the lyrics come from? I don't know from the darkest part of my mind. <laughs> from your heart. <laughs> from, yeah, from your heart. Yeah, from your heart. Yeah. Do you really want to just be somebody's slave? I do. It's really uh, fun. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I'm looking for anything, so I don't care. A song like Coraline, which is so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Thank a, Thank really, you. you're telling a great story of a girl who just First has... First time so... we talk about it in the radio. Yeah, exactly. Welcome. Uh, we have couches here. Yeah. Uh, it's a story about a girl who's incredibly empathetic, right? And yeah. carries people's pain and really ingests it and makes it her own. Yeah. I, I mean, is that is that about somebody you know? Is that yeah. about... Where yeah. does that come from? Um, it's a, it's a, it's a part of my life that I, that I lived as a, as an audience that I saw from the outside, but, uh, that I wanted to count because I feel it's very, very important. And, uh, um, it really, um, I don't know how to say it, uh, influenced me, um, mm -hmm. but in a better way. Uh, and I want just, I just wanted to count that story. So it, it, you knew this person, you yeah. watched this person. Yeah, yeah be incredibly empathetic yeah. and you turn their story into a piece of art. Yeah. Do you turn it into a piece of art for what for you? Is it a cautionary tale? Is it inspiration to be more empathetic? Um, it's just uh, sometimes you, you feel you have to communicate something, but you don't know how with, with the words and with the normal chatting and stuff. So you, you put it into music or into painting or acting. Uh, I think that's the meaning of the arts. Do you share it with the person it's about? Yeah, sure. Is that scary? No. <laughs> I don't no, know. it's something beautiful. No, it is beautiful, but yeah. it's God, it could be overwhelming to the person who you know you no, wrote the song no, no, about. No, no. no I, I knew that it was going to be appreciated. That's nice. <laughs> it's beautiful. I, I want to go into songs that I can't really pronounce very well. Okay, um, I'll help you. Please help me. Um, uh, Balo Fela Vita. Ballo. 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 That's the album. That's yeah. That was an album, but it, there's you have two albums. One is a a, a part one, yeah. and I'm assuming there'll be a part two, right? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, maybe yeah, yeah maybe not. Uh, <laughs> but Torna Casa. Yeah. Yeah. Did I say that correct? Yeah. I, can you just summarize that story? Because I looked at the, the the translations. But by the way, you should listen to the music, whether it be in English or Italian, we're gonna put a link in the description below, because it really is beautiful. And when you take the time to translate the stories, it's really, you know, again, really, really special. Thank you. Of course. Uh, that's all right. <laughs> um, good. I don't know, because it's, a, it's a, like, the, I, I, I've not asked about this song since like three years. <laughs> so it's strange. But yeah, it's, um, I don't know, it's something that I, never lived it's uh it's a story that i make up made up but 
I don't know. I wrote it when I was 16, so it's um, it it was just the translation of something that I was living at the moment, but that now I kind of uh, cannot explain, of course, because uh, now I'm 22, so many many years passed. But but you you wrote about something you did live or you didn't live? Um, no, the story that I that I tell in the in the song, I, ne I never lived it. Of course, it's kind of a an, an odyssey, okay. but um, but it's the translation of something that I was feeling at the moment. Interesting. That's what I was trying to get at. Is this the ability to write songs about something that is pulled out of imagination mm -hmm. or somebody else's story when you enter their shoes? Like the first original songs that you were writing, were they about your life or were they about things that were not not imaginary but like fabricated? No, the first one was uh, was uh, about something that I wish it would happen. Like it was about how uh, important was music for us and uh, this kind of stuff. Pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. but, but, but maybe, we young. but maybe a song that manifested a future. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Maybe, yeah. Is that song even out in the world? Where yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's chosen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's wait, so that was, but that's an English single, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So that was the first song you wrote? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Why do you write in English first and not Italian? Uh, yeah. Because I, I was young and I thought it was cooler. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming more challenging. Uh, yes, at the time, yeah. And now where is it at? Easy. No, uh, it's, easy, uh, easy. it's kind of my second language. Wow. I didn't know that that was like literally the first song you guys wrote. Yeah. Another great single, uh, no, a great song, but it was the first uh, English. Yeah. First, I thought it was just the first English original, to, not to the be first honest, original. It was the first release. Uh, yeah, release, release song. Single, exactly. Release, release song. song. Yeah, we wrote some shit before. Some but it was real <laughs> exactly. shit. Exactly. It's, but it's some really shit. It's, uh... But was the shit before chosen in English or Italian? Uh, always, always yeah. English. Yeah, English. Was it hard to write in Italian for the first time? Yeah. Really. Yeah. I was not used to it's, it's different yeah so i i had to practice it a lot what is hard is it reciting the lyrics or actually coming up with the phrasing it's and... that we're very strict with the with the syllabus and uh with how our word sounds and uh, english is more free like to be interpreted and uh, with the accents and stuff italian is very very strict yeah yeah you have to get it exactly right and there's so many ways to interpret it if you get it a little bit off, right? Yeah. Wow. Do you think a song sung in Italian can have success like all over the world? Yeah. You do? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, okay. It's a very melodic um, language. So, yeah. When you think of like a next single, obviously Mamma Mia, obviously Slave, Beggin, would you like to see one of your Italian records yeah. make it here in the United States? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Is is there a part of you that's a little annoyed that what's hitting here in the states is a cover? No, 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 no it's absolutely a, not. It's a song that we really reinterpreted. So yeah. I, I feel that there's uh, a lot of us into that song. So it's it's like it's a it's our own song. It really yeah, is. You. It's also incredible that thanks this song we stay here and now. You know, yeah. so it's very important for us, obviously. And by the way, like sonically, like you said, really is you guys and yeah. set a tone for everything else that I listen to afterwards. Like yeah, really yeah, to yeah, a point sense. where like it sounds like a brand new song, but also it kind of gives you a glimpse into what you can expect with everything else. Yeah, it was it's it was the start of a journey. And I think that it's it explains very well how our sounds developed in through the years. Yeah, that's wild. Wild. What are you thinking over there? Why do you the song was recorded in 2017 or put out in 2017, right? Yeah. yeah. So why do you think it's so popular five years later? TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, TikTok and, yeah. and also the fact that um, we were having this huge visibility in, in Europe because of the Eurovision. Eurovision changed a lot. And I think yeah. that, I don't know, this huge visibility gave us the chance to be reflected also in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is it like to be a part of Eurovision? Because I think uh, Americans don't necessarily fully understand it. There's like a movie about it that they've consumed here. Yeah, I'll be with... honest. I still have no... I, I can't understand Jim it. Jim Carrey. Yeah. Uh, Jim Carrey, Jim... Will Ferrell, someone like Will that. Will Ferrell. 
yeah. Will Ferrell. But but it's it, it, it they make a mockery of it. But the reality is, it's this incredible music competition where yeah. the best and the brightest musicians from all over the world come together, yeah. Yeah. and they have to qualify to get there. Yeah, and it's incredibly competitive. Yeah. But well, yeah. And, and again, the best and the brightest are only allowed to perform on that freaking stage. So, what is it like even making it that far, and let alone winning? Yeah, I was kind of sick. Yeah, yeah. it's a uh, it's huge, huge stage, a great organization, great teams, and uh, um, every, everything is really, really well made. I would say it's uh, it's a huge event. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, each country like select uh, a singer or a performer to to be represented by, and uh, yeah, to be part of it was was pretty pretty cool because um, it was like a taste of America, like uh, this huge stage with this like thousand people working uh, behind it. It was really a taste of yeah. America. <laughs> That's true. It and, was old. Oh, yeah. sorry. No, no. Go ahead. It was also um, good to stay with different artists from different countries yeah. in the same place, you know, because it was really, I don't know. Inspiring. Inspiring, exactly. Because, okay, you are from, I don't know, Spain, you are from Germany. It's, 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 yeah. It was really cool. Just talk with the different artists from different countries to, yeah, take his part. Music is a universal language. Like, that's, yeah. 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 it's totally on display at Eurovision. How do you guys get selected? Uh, in Italy, to, to get to the Eurovision, you have to win in Sarem, which is uh, the, the, like the Italian, like Italian Idol. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And but, then, did you guys think you would have, like, did you think going into this you had any chance of winning? No. No, absolutely not. No, 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 no. So at what point during the competition you're like, guys, I think, I think we have a chance here. Uh, when they gave that like a thousand points, it was <laughs> like clear that we were going to win. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Super. Why do you think you won? Because we were fucking great. Good. Yeah. <laughs> great. Our performance was amazing. I to say. <laughs> no, I think because we were um, a complete outsider in the competition. Like yeah. nobody did something uh, similar to us. It was very uh, pop, very colorful. And then there was us with, I don't know, distortion and fire. <laughs> yeah, I think also because we were very natural with our music yeah. into the stage. And also, um, we didn't have like you know a huge I don't know attraction on the stage like yeah it was just, just the fire exactly just us and the fire <laughs> basically so and um, that that fact maybe was really I don't know impactful for the people but yeah well maybe maybe the magic trick was that we magic. were popular <laughs> and uncommon at the same time yeah I, I you know I understand that because you did you weren't unknowns. By Eurovision time, you had one X Factor, correct? Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, like everybody says, at least here in America, unless you're Kelly Clarkson, you don't want to win any of those award shows. You know, you or not award shows, competition shows. You want to be second or third. Again, you have redefined that uh, myth or conspiracy or whatever, because you guys win and you go on to. No, with the X Factor, we were second. Really? Yeah. Second. What the f <laughs> Why does it say that? So, okay, good. You didn't win. So you <laughs> We were a moral winner. Yeah. No, no, no. Exactly. But, but if anything, you're you're making my case even stronger, which is you don't want to win those competitions. Yeah. You really want to come in second or third because yeah. like, gosh. But you were unknown, but still evolving in terms of your sound. So, uh, okay. Uh gosh. Is it a Buoni? Did yeah, I say that correct? Yeah, very good. Very good. Very good. That's what they win Eurovision with. Yeah. Okay, yes, I did know that. And so I was trying to figure out the whole the whole thing. Obviously, this record different for, from your others for a couple different reasons, but why is it different for you? Why was it different in sound, different in lyrical content than what you had crafted before? Uh, because it was the song that made us fight more in our life. <laughs> Nobody wanted to be a single. Yeah. And we said, okay, we want to go to Sanremo with it and uh, become like the last in the charts. And then we won it without wanting it. Like, it was no purpose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, we went there just to make noise and then we won. Yeah. Uh, and then we went to the Eurovision and they said, okay, we have to translate the song, make it in English because nobody's going to like Italian language. And we said, no, 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 no. And then we wanted to. Yeah. So we were right. And it was really... Um, yeah, nevertheless, we won. Yeah. yeah. And also think that it was really important for us because it was a really, um, you know, hard rock song yeah. for the Italy during the Sanremo and it was really yeah. 
different from the other you know songs that um, exactly participated yeah. on Saramo. So it was really important for us on Saramo with this song. It was song of, of magic, really. How do you define rock and roll? I think that it's an attitude, and I think that it's basically have fun and stay free, you know, and uh, yeah, experiment a lot, uh, have an open-minded vision and this kind of stuff. Yeah, you can be rock and roll also playing jazz music. Yeah, absolutely. Really? Yeah, yeah. it's independent. It can music it's, a, it's a way of being, it's a way of, of seeing the music and living the music. Yeah. It's not just the distortion. Everybody is able to put distortion on the guitar. Yeah, it's just something that runs into your brain since the day you were born. Yeah, it's the freedom that you have when you live your life and when you play music in general, I think. Yeah. So when people say rock and roll's been dead, do you agree with that or do you disagree? No. no. It's just born. Okay. It's taken on different forms? As everything else. Like... Madonna is different from Olivia Rodrigo, but they are both pop. Like everything develops and yeah. changes. And also rock and roll is changing. And it's also influencing other genres. Now we hear a lot of like distorted guitars in rap music and in pop music. And it's just something that other genres took from there yeah. as everything else always did. And then the trend is, I don't know, it always comes back and, uh, and goes away. So. Would you consider yourselves students of history? Because you've talked about, you know, being heavily inspired by the past, but putting a modern twist on it. Yeah. Things are cyclical? Yeah. Yeah, a lot. But, of course, every time it comes back with, with a, with a new characteristic. So, yeah. um, I, I, I just think that we have to um, put it back in the charts and have some some people to represent it, like two or three iconic bands or iconic performers of that kind of music and it will come back as a trend that, as in the 70s or, or in the 90s. How is rock and roll different today in 2021, 2022 than it was 70s, 80s, 90s? Uh, that's good. <laughs> that's a nice question. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know. I think that during the 70s, you know, lots of bands uh, the opportunities to I don't know experiment really 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 a lot with the music you know yeah for example just think about I don't know Jimmy Page with the I don't know the word in English that's the you know ah with the violins with the stay violins on. stay that stick, pl stick that, that play is her his in guitar sorry it was, it's guitar. yeah it's guitar and uh, I don't know I think that the band from the past have maybe l more chance to experiment with the our with the music you know yeah everything was new yeah at the time. everything was new like and this. also yeah for the phone i don't know during the gigs for example that now we have the the yeah, phone and we can phones. record it i don't know sure oh yeah and during the 70s it was really you know um every time it was yeah an event, exactly it was an event you never know what what they're going to yeah, do exactly and now you play one gig and everybody knows everything yeah all the exactly. schedule and everything you're gonna do on the stage it's interesting yeah everything is more i don't know like a fast food now yeah so exactly. you have to reinvent yourself more often yeah and also lots of culture for the gigs you know and the club that play lots of music lots of different artists that you can i don't know see every night that you yeah up. the time that yeah. was a culture of live music now is every, everything is yeah. streamed or just thinking about the i don't know in italy for example we don't we don't have lots of club when you can when we can see lots of different bands we don't have this kind of culture for the band and for this it's very hard for a rock band and general yeah, for a band it, yeah. exactly wow. reach the top it's true i mean one like the competition is crazy because you can stream and you can get art and yeah. hear performances see performances everywhere but to your point of like a fad like you have to keep reinventing yourself yeah, yeah. does that is that a fun challenge or is that a taxing challenge because you've like while you reinvent yourself you you have to question your identity at a certain point do you know what i'm saying i yeah i have to say that like now we have two albums and we're in our 20s so it's uh it's, it's still fun i think that when you wrote like 10 albums it, <laughs> it becomes to to get like serious <laughs> like what am i gonna am i gonna say now 
but we're not at that point. Where do you see yourselves going? Like, do you have a plan in your head, or is a part of being rock and roll letting it be free yeah, and yeah, it just yeah, yeah. goes Same where it goes? We want to live it day by day. Yeah. So you have no like want to create a certain amount of albums, tour a certain amount. Uh, we want to play um, as long as we can, just as long as we can. It's yeah. not twenty years, thirty years, ten years. It's as long as we can. How do you ensure that? How do you make sure that you're performing for as long as you can? Stay healthy. <laughs> Stay healthy, both mentally and physically. Yeah, yeah, yeah both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, also take care of our relationship. Yeah. I mean, that is, has to be the biggest priority. Yeah. Like we, we've talked to people from Spice Girls to BTS to all these bands. And the biggest thing is like, they all say it at one point, it's them insulated against the world. You know what I mean? Like it yeah. re all you have at the end of the day Obviously, there's management and there's label and everything. But the reality is all you have at the end of the day is the four of you. Yeah. So keeping that as healthy as humanly possible, how, how do you ensure health, though? Like, is there a way to have discussions both creatively, make decisions where people um, feel seen? I think like, the only way is uh, not, letting, not letting anything unsaid, like to say everything, to have the freedom of say everything. Yeah. And to be, feel safe enough. Yeah. And also yeah. to be okay with being attacked, maybe. Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah. You have to take your scan. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Also, for you know, Brazilian new music, it's important to stay chill with us and this kind of stuff. For I don't yeah. know. The Just environment to has yeah, to be good. Otherwise, everything is too stressful. And yeah. Oh, of course, we had periods where we were like fighting, and uh, yeah. and it was like twice stressful. Yeah, because we are we are of course for. For persons, different so, people, yeah. different people. So, it, this is the I think the art part into the band, but at the same time, it's the cool part into the band, you know, because you have like four people then thinking all all days, you know, and so <coughs> I don't know, it, it's good, especially when you create new music or when you think about you thinking about I don't know the or to create this stage or I don't know lots of things, yeah. But it's to your point, it's like it's four different people thinking on their own they all yeah. have different ideas yeah, you need exactly. to collaborate and come together there's so many things creatively that need exactly. to be done exactly wow exactly. so you have to fight and that's a part of growing pains but also like yeah. if you're not like having an intense collaboration is it even is it even worth it you know yeah. people get passionate and heated for things they care the most about yeah what's the rock scene like in rome is there one doesn't exist, doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. of course we have lots of you know Em emergence, emergent bands. I don't yeah, know upcoming. Way. Exactly, yeah. upcoming band. And so we have this kind of scene, but we don't have a mainstream scene. For example, you know, um, the people that have my age used to, you know... They don't know they, who Led Zeppelin Yeah, are. exactly. Uh, or wow. used to play wow. music with the with Logic on the computer, for example, mm -hmm. and this kind of music, you know, but it's strange see a guitar into a shop, you know, was oh my god what what is this <laughs> no way but because i think that mm, i don't know it, it's strange it's strange. we don't have a, a really strong culture for the music for, for example in los angeles and also in london you have a really strong culture for the music the club roxy the whiskey Agogo, yeah all yeah. all in one block the viper room yeah the viper room yeah but really culture and the, the youngest guy used to you know Hang around there. Yeah, hang around and also buy a guitar into a guitar shop and I don't know, make jam session and this is this is the main power of the music, I think. And in Italy we don't have this kind of culture. But of course we have lots of band that uh try to mm -hmm. to make play it. yeah, exactly. Yeah, there are a lot it. of musicians that are trying of course. Yeah. Yeah. But like the rock scene is not a real thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the matter. So you have to find more than a, we can say, maybe a classic musician yeah. or, or in general, because the rock in general in Italy is not something that is taken like serious way, so that's why. Yeah, exactly. We don't have the culture for the band. We have the culture, I don't know, for the lead singer yeah. and the band that or stay kind of back also. and play for the lead singer. Um, but I think that this, that's a pity, I don't know. Is there a part of you that wants to reestablish that rock scene or create a rock scene? No, in Italy? We, don't, we don't have that goal. We have to no. think uh, about ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> we are selfish. Yeah. Selfish on point, energy. On that point of view, yeah. 
What what is success to you? How do you define it? Oh, uh, uh, it's a yeah, it's a yeah, it's a fancy way of, of, a, of a well done job. Okay, but what is success? What is the consequence? What is it made up of? What, mm. what does it look like to you? What does it feel like? Uh, it's a mixture of many many things. Of course, it's good to to feel the the love and the respect of the people and uh, seeing people that look up to you it's it's great but on the other side it's a, it's a responsibility and uh of course you lose your privacy and uh you have to think about everything twice but as everything as a as a good part and a bad part you have to keep the balance of course uh, is that definition the same for you too yeah yeah, yeah. of course sure. absolutely the same definition when are you at your happiest when we write new music and good music. <laughs> yeah, when we have a banger. Yeah. Yeah, we have a banger that represents. Yeah, exactly. Of course. That's the point. We, we always have to feel represented by the music we are writing. Yeah, and when the music that represents us, you know, reach lots, really lots of people, we are like, wow. How many songs do you have sitting somewhere? Like ready to go uh, or half of big? Like, mm, like half a dozen. Yeah. Six? Yeah. Yeah. Six that are like almost done, or no, could... six close, Both. well done, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. a bunch, and lots of input, of course, yeah. like memory, recording, and this, yeah, exactly. Very. Lyric. We always have something yeah. going on. When's the last time you actually sat down to write something? Oh, it was like two months ago, uh, yeah, maybe one less. Mo- less, maybe one month ago, I don't yeah. know. Oh, wow. Something like that. I don't remember. Yeah. Will you ever let somebody into your process? Like a, a, another writer, somebody no, who just, is uh, just our producer, uh, Fabrizio. Uh, exactly. Yeah, He's Fabrizio. the only guy you allow in that room. Yeah. Yeah. What 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 does he possess that nobody else has? Uh, <laughs> great great culture and great yeah. taste. Yeah. 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 And, and great skills. Skills, skills really and well. creativity. And, and he knows you well enough to yeah. speak freely and for you to receive yeah. it freely. Yeah, yeah, he also knows the balance between everyone else, so yeah, yeah. he knows. What does Victoria add to this group that I'm missing right now? Organization. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, organization yeah. and uh, she's, she's an hard worker. Yeah. Very hard worker. Yeah. But you all have to work hard to make this work, right? You yeah, have to yeah. work together for each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the hardest part about being in a band? Take the balance from each yeah, other. Maybe. Keep the balance. Keep the balance. Yeah. You keep keep balance. the balance. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And the best part about being in a band? Uh, uh, support each other. Yeah. Wow. Is it support that you've never felt before? Um. It's it's something that I think it's very special. Not everybody has it. It's like in every moment of your life, you have your back covered. And that's like when I say all you have is each other. Yeah. It really is true. And you do, that you have each other's back whether you're on stage or you're uh, walking down the street or dealing in a business meeting, whatever. Uh, it's really special. Yes, it is. Cool. Final thoughts over there, Daniel? I just want to know what it's like to be acknowledged by some of these like great rock bands like the Rolling Stones. I know uh, the guitarist in Kiss mentioned you guys. So, like, How does that make you guys feel? That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's overwhelming, but in a positive way. Yeah. It's just amazing. Like, Also more more easily participating to to the amas or the emas like we we were in the same room with all the artists that we grow up listening yeah. to so um it's it's something really special that makes you realize like what you're actually doing yeah yeah for example for the stones it was really insane because i don't know when i was I don't know, when I was 10 years old, so 8 years ago, <laughs> basically, <laughs> I, I'm used to study and also learn the guitar from Keith Richards and Ronnie Wood, so it was insane play for, for them. For them. It's insane. It, it's, I think that is the really best part. It's like, what the f***? Are you guys able to like talk to them and get yeah. tips or advice? Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's so cool. It was great. As we sit here today... Is it safe to say that rock and roll is back, or is it in the process of coming back? I think, I think it's, it's never gone. Yeah, it's never gone. Yeah. It was just resting. <laughs> Do you think Harry Styles is rock and roll? Yeah. 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 
I really do think he's one of the last remaining rock stars. I don't think there's many out there, like it's traditional. One of, one of the last icons. How do you define an icon? I don't know. They have the, I don't know, the special Something thing. special. It's something something to, more. It's something in the face. Something in the face. Yes. In the way they, in the way they look. Is, is they look at other people. Is there a want to be an icon? Yeah, sure. Do you know what it takes to get there? No. <laughs> Does that's it just happen one day? You wake up. That's the best part. That's the best part. I feel like you're on your way. Yeah. You guys are all on your way. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Um, we've covered a lot here with Monoskin. I, I, I'm saying it correct, right? Because yeah. again, yeah, it's good. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. Can I ask one question? So yeah. How do you guys feel when you go into interviews and they ask you about like Italian food and all those <laughs> questions that you get asked all the time? Like, yeah, oh, it's, it's kind of cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I I don't expect it so much, but I was watching a bunch of interviews and I could kind of see it in your face. Like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. These questions. Yeah, they are the standard questions. Yeah. We're used to that. When you guys first started crafting originals and started releasing them, I mean, there had to have been a strategy behind having your first original be an English song, right? Because that's, I, I realized that, like, you kind of, there's like, we're almost at equal parts Italian records and English records almost. You know what I mean? So you've covered all the bases. Um, and maybe it wasn't purposely strategic, but you were. No, it was natural, but it, it, it worked came, out. It came out being useful. Yeah, because when it was time for like somebody to go in and dive in, yeah, you had everything. Yeah, really, it's a, I, I think that's a gift. So, big question: since the beginning of this journey in 2016, what's the biggest thing you've learned? Oh well, hmm. well, um, huh? Yeah. During what age six? You started no, in 2016. Since you, since you started, which is the biggest thing you learned? Mm -hmm. Huh. You, you cannot fake anything. Yeah. It's true. People recognize it. Authenticity shines through. Yeah. And bull blinds people to the point where they get sick. Yeah. Or maybe not forever. Just, yeah, know. yeah. One day or another, they, they yeah. get you. Do you feel like there was a point in your career where you felt you were faking it? No, 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 no. Never? No, no, never. Some people here say you fake it until you make it. Yeah, but we didn't answer. Just being yourself. Yeah. yeah. Just being yourself. And I think also it's important trying to, you know, um, show that you are yourself in front of the people. This is the main goal, I think. You know what I mean? Yeah, vulnerability. Yeah. Opening up. Yeah. Is it scary to be vulnerable? When you're on the stage now. No. <laughs> it's everything else. When you're 10 feet higher, though. <laughs> but like when you're backstage taking a yeah. picture for somebody, yeah. yeah. Gosh. Do you find social media to be a blessing or a curse? Both. Both. It depends on how you use it. Yeah. How you use it and but. how you're, I don't know, everyone has a different sensibility. So, and there's no, there's not like a wrong way to take it or a good way to take it. Everybody feels what it feels. But it depends on you. Yeah, now I think that the social media in general are the new television, you know? Yeah. Because, I don't know. It's a window of the word. Yeah, exactly. Right? But, but you have to say it to use it properly. Yeah, exactly. But we talk about the 70s and like the band, and now the social media are, you know, in a negative way. They, I don't know, like spoiler lots of songs, I don't know, yeah. lots of stuff. Even like about the set the list you were talking so, about. Yeah. Yeah. So it depends, but. Yeah. Now uh, they're like a television stuff like that. Understanding you guys a little bit more, I appreciate you. I miss Victoria. Um, but like you guys are very special, very unique, very different. And I don't know, I, I can't I can't fully put my finger on it. Like it's obviously who you are. And like I mean you grew, grew up very global, right? Yeah. Your parents are flight attendants? Yeah. yeah. Um, like does that play into the music you make? I really don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, I'm honest, but I uh, but I think that uh, my education was very good. So uh, if I'm here, it's uh, in a good part thanks to my parents. What did What do your parents think? How do they How do they see this? Can they comprehend it that you've gone from busking in Rome to yeah AMAs? yeah yeah, yeah more, they, more than me? I think they they understand it more. <laughs> really? Yeah yeah yeah. yeah me yeah. too. <laughs> because they're on the outside looking in. Yeah. It's easier to look at something through that lens than being the fish in the bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. They they have yeah. to be proud. 
Yeah. 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 Is yeah. Italy proud? I think, yeah. Half of them. Really? Half of them. Maybe not. Yeah, 70 30. Yeah, 70 30, exactly. But let's be real, not all rocks, like rock stars throughout history weren't loved by everybody. Yeah. To be a rock star, it's you have to be hated. to be loved by everybody. Yeah, exactly. If you're loved by everybody, you're faking something. Hell yeah. They are all the haters, you know? Yeah. Everybody has its haters. I love my haters. Yeah. <laughs> I really love them. Haters are your motivators. Yeah. Uh, Monoskin, awesome. every. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree. I agree. You agree? They really are motivating, by the way. Also, yeah. the funniest part of the video. Yeah. You get done being a rock star and you go to Instagram and look at the hate comments and laugh. Facebook is is the hater <laughs> environment. <laughs> but by the way, like Facebook's also older people too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's who's not into you. Yeah. But again, historically, who was not into rock music? Old people, you know, squares. Yeah. 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 It's always the same. Yeah. History repeats itself yeah. in a different way. Monoskin, please listen to their music. We're going to put links in the description below. Uh, there's two albums, bunch of singles. Uh, yeah. Do you have a date for the next body of work? I mean, volume two, you say you have six songs, could be enough to complete something, an EP at least. It's a, it's a big, it's somewhere to start. How do you know when, it. how do you know when something's ready for public ear? You feel it. Feel it. Yeah. yeah, you feel it. But what is the feeling? Is it the same feeling every time? It's, yeah, mm. it's a, it's a, it's a process that's completed. Yeah. And I think that now it's important to take our time to write good music, you know what I mean? Because we have lots of things to do, obviously, but now is the time for the music. And so it's important, I think, take our time to write a good music. Don't rush it. Yeah. Exactly. Because some people may want to rush. You want to ride this wave, baby, get it out there. But the reality is no. Yeah, no rush. Exactly. Quality leads the way. Yeah. Monoskin, everybody. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Appreciate you. Hey, beautiful human. Thanks for watching our full interview, but I get it. Like, a full interview is a lot. So we got a clips channel. We don't expect you to watch the full thing anymore, so we just gave you the highlights. Please subscribe and uh, notifications and all that stuff. Okay, cool. I love you.